Hey everyone, the name is Chris Barocci. Welcome to Common Time 22. If you enjoyed my videos, please subscribe to the channel. That would be absolutely awesome. Check out the description box. Under my videos, uh, you'll find gear links, uh, my signal chain, additional infos, my merchandise, and all those cool stuff. All right, the first comment is really interesting, actually. Uh, it came under my The Truth About Cheap and Expensive Guitars video. And it's from uh, Los Viajes de Chavi, Jaffi. Sorry for the uh, butchering. I'm not sure how to pronounce X in Spanish, sorry. Uh, nice. Could you compare both cheap and expensive Stratocasters with a song full of bending, such as Samba Pati from Carlos Santana? I have a Fender Squire Mustang and a Spark Positive Grid amp, and I noticed a massive difference during bendings of Samba Pati uh, compared to the original song. Super interesting. Let's, let's talk about it in a sec. I suspect that the difference is is mainly because of both the guitar and the amp and it would be very helpful to compare bending tones of cheap expensive guitars and amps so we can know what guitar amps get similar tones and the ones that do not get close enough this is something that's um, that's been misunderstood a lot i mean obviously the the actual natural sustain of an instrument and we, here we are talking about uh, the guitar because uh, an amp will not help you with sustain that much. Obviously, if you have certain settings on certain amps, they will help with it, but it's not like an amp will make your guitar sustain longer. So um, if you have more gain or more compression um, in your rig, uh, then you will naturally, of course, uh, have a longer sustain. But the real deal here is the guitar. That being said, the kind of sustain you are mentioning it doesn't have to do a lot with the rig. You could grab a pretty inexpensive guitar and amp and have the same kind of sustain as with, let's say, Santana's uh, old like Gibson or Yamaha or the uh, obviously his PRS guitars with a crazy twin reverb or or um, his um, his boogies or whatever he's uh, using at the time. You can get a very similar sustain if you have that volume. That is the key, the volume. Because, like, for example, Samba Pati, that's a really, really nice example, like a really cool song to talk about this, uh, this whole sustain thing. You can never, ever have that endless sustain unless you have a really loud amp cranked, like probably a 10 or very close to absolute maximum. And I'm not sure if he had anything in between. There are rumors about him using a rotary speaker cabinet to have that nasal mid range tone or like woody tone, however you want to call it. I just call it ridiculously awesome because it's such a unique tone. Uh, or he had like a, a wah somewhere in the signal chain sort of cocked in the mid range somewhere or some sort of a boost or nothing, just literally the amp gunned, like completely turned to 10. I'm not sure exactly, no one really knows except for probably him and his producer. Uh, but the fact is that if you don't have that crazy volume, you will never ever have that kind of sustain. The, the issue with your rig is literally just that it's not enough loud to cause the guitar's pickups and the, the speaker to, to create this endless uh, feedback sustain. It's, it's feedback. That's what we're talking about. So um, that's, the, that's the thing about his sustain and his tone, really. It's all about really loud amps. And you cannot have that kind of um, beautiful, long, endless um, decay or like, you know, long notes uh, without that volume. So I have the same issue, basically, even though I have a, a pretty expensive setup here. Um, I selected everything in a way that I'm super happy with it. And on stage, I have 
a ridiculously good sustain. Even with my Tally and Strat and Sigma Coil uh, guitars, which normally will not have uh, that kind of a, a long sustain as, for example, humbucker guitars. But on stage with that volume, not an issue at all. I can have all the, the long notes in my solos, whatever I want, because I have the volume. Here in the studio though, I am not using my guitar caps. Most of the time I'm using the, um, the two notes Captor X or the Oxbox, the Universal Audio Oxbox to, um, to replace my guitar cab and a microphone. And I have emulations of guitar cabs and microphones, which means that the volume right here is way more of a, a bedroom level I'd say it's like a really loud um, apartment volume. That's not enough. All right, here's a German comment. It's from Harry B. Hallo Chris, reinigst du manchmal deine Gitarrenseiten? Wenn ja, womit? He's asking if I'm cleaning my guitar strings even. And if yes, with what and how? Uh, well, I don't really clean them unless I had a really sweaty session, whether at home in the summer when it's really hot or, uh, or in the rehearsal room or obviously at a gig with all the lights and a lot of people and you know a sweaty gig then I would, I would pull that dirt off the, the strings with just a, a microfiber cloth or like a towel, whatever I have, or my t-shirt even, like the, uh, the bottom side of the t-shirt. I just go over the strings um, and try to clean that off at least, but only then. Normally, I don't, I don't care about it too much because, uh, first of all, I don't have a really aggressive sweat, which is good. Um, well, good on me because I don't have to change my strings after every time I play the guitar. And second of all, I will not leave the strings on the guitar so long that it, it starts to sound super dull because I cannot accept that. I hate that because uh, from that moment on, when the guitar starts to sound dull, I only want to play it high gain because there you still kind of don't really hear it that much but with low gain and, and clean tones stuff that i really like about guitar playing will start to sound really flat and like you lose dynamics and everything and that's not cool i will change the strings anyhow after let's say two months maximum and if i have something uh, that's important like let's say a video where i use a certain guitar for clean sounds i will change the strings anyhow um, if it's a gig, something where it really matters and I definitely want to avoid b breaking strings, I will change the strings anyhow. It doesn't matter if they're like three days old or two months old. Uh, so for that reason, I'm not too worried about strings. Um, but as told, if you're, if you're a sweaty person or your sweat really kills the strings, um, yeah, well, then, then clean them, of course. And there's one more thing that's really important. If you have any kind of coated strings, elixirs, the Daddario's, whichever brand, don't use any chemicals like cleaning fluids and, and fast fret and all of those things. Uh, don't use them because that will sort of um, destroy that coating. Okay, so in that case, definitely just go for a dry cloth and just go over the strings and leave them be. That coating is there to protect the string from rusting. So all you have to do is get rid of that junk, that dirt that's on the uh, on the strings, and just yeah, you're done.
All right, the next comment is from Robin Martial. And it came under my um, mono stereo wet dry video. Um, if I only have one pedal in stereo, which is my Warus Audio ACS-1, which is kind of an amp simulation pedal, uh, and all of the remaining pedals are in mono, is it gonna sound good or is just gonna sound like dual mono? Um, it's, it's not gonna be proper stereo. Well, it, it will be, <laughs> but you will not really necessarily hear that. Um, the fact is that the stereo sound is only gonna be very obvious if you have radically different things happening on the left and right side of that stereo mix. So the ACS-1 gives you the option of having different amps simulated on both sides. Let's say you have um, a Fender style sound on, on one side of the mix and I don't know, an AC-30 or a Marshall on the other side. And that will sound already different enough to give you a wider experience, like tonal experience, but, and you can, that's literally stereo, <laughs> but it's still not gonna feel very stereo. It's gonna sound and feel more like dual mono. Uh, if you want that rig to sound like actually stereo, you need a modulation or a time-based effect uh, that is stereo before the ACS-1 to make it more obvious. And then you can definitely um, differentiate between the two sides. And, and if you're wearing headphones, you will definitely have a very much stereo uh, experience. This one came under my building my most powerful pedal board yet, which is right there. And I still absolutely love it. Um, this is from Blues Box. Have we reached peak pedal? <laughs> there seem to be so many out there now. Is it sustainable for all those manufacturers? Great video. Uh, well, first of all, thank you. If we just generalize this whole thing, Compared to pedals we had 20 years ago, or even, even 10 years ago, I think pedals are just getting better and better. If we're talking about digital pedals, that's not a surprise because modern technology, modern chips will create a more realistic and more detailed um, sound compared to, let's say, the first Line 6, uh, whatever, delay pedals. Uh, the DL4 is still a legend, but if you compare that to, let's say, a Strymon or a, a very current um, Universal Audio uh, Starlight or those like current top, top level uh, delays, there's going to be so much more detail in the tone of these um, modern units just because chips are way more powerful and they can, um, the the creators can dig way deeper into the details of those trails and make sure that none of the frequencies get altered in a way they don't want it to, etc. So that's not a surprise. But even drive pedals. Um, earlier, uh, I had the feeling like the only really nice sounding uh, drive pedals were, well, just a handful, really. A few boss pedals, a few MXRs. Uh, maybe full tone and you know a few more pedals which were like oh wow these are really good and everyone started modding those original units and started to to create new circuits and um, as pedal companies try to create something better each and every year or every few years and they also have all this competition going on they're forced to make something that's better than all the the rest right so this is this comp competitive um, uh, sort of evolution of pedals just creates the best sounding drive pedals best sounding compressors best sounding choruses and features that are super clever um, it makes sense like a lot of sense we all want something different and because of all these companies having that competition and trying to to get all the attention and create the best possible pedals we get way better sounding 
pedals, no matter what kind of um, pedal we're talking about, as told. If it's a low gain drive, a high gain drive, a fuzz, a compressor, boost, a delay, reverb, whatever it is, um, it's ridiculous the quality and the um, the tonal options we get. And this was definitely not the case uh, when I got into pedals. I really wasn't able to find, for example, something that even comes close to the King of Tone. That's why I bought my King of Tone, uh, when was it, like five, six years ago? I was looking for something that gives me that vibe and I was not able to find something that that does everything um, that the King of Tone is so good at um, on a, a similar level. And I was like, okay, well, then I have to get that one, <laughs> which is going to cost me a lot of money. And now, honestly, with the Toxic Twins, with the, uh, the um, VS Audio Royal Flush, with so many other pedals that just came out a couple of years ago, I'm like, oh, wow. Oh, we are really getting there. It's just it's just ridiculous, and I am so looking forward to seeing where this all uh, develops. Alrighty, thanks so much for watching. Make sure to hit me up with your questions down there in the comments. Uh, I'll be there checking them out and answering them, and you might even end up in one of these comment time videos. You guys take it easy. See you in the next video. Meet you down in the comments. I'll be back. Bye-bye.